Hello everybody, Michael here for Tactical Imperialis, doing the next part of my Codex Space Marines analysis today, looking at the Elite section. Okay, there are three pages of Elite, there seems to be three pages of everything, this Codex is absolutely huge. Okay, hang on, there we go. Start with the two veteran squads, Vanguard and Sternguard. They both have the same stat line, so weapon skill plus skill 4, strength and toughness 4, 1 wound, initiative 4, 2 attacks, leadership 9 and 3 plus save. Vanguard are armed with power armor, bolt pistol, chainsaw and grenades. They have, they shall know no fear, combat squads, chapter tactics and heroic intervention. Now with the new sick Ed Codex is there is a reference section right at the back. So instead of going flicking through looking for all what the rules do, I can just go back here. Heroic intervention. Ignore penalty for disordered charges. Sergeant automatically passes initiative test for glorious intervention. So look out sir becomes easier and you don't lose attacks for charging multiple units, I think. And you don't lose initiative for charging through terrain. Um, they are 19 points each. You're going to take melee weapons. They're allowed. Each model is allowed a different melee weapon. So, for example, down here there is a vanguard squad with all sorts of different war gear. Um, any model may take a grab or plasma pistol, melter bombs or storm shield. The entire squad may take jump packs. This is recommended unless you want to put them in a, a transport, such as a drop pod, rhino or razorback. A uh, sergeant may take a relic blade for 25 points. So, they're obviously very melee orientated. That's what they're designed to do. And the jump packs are the best delivery system in my opinion. If you've seen our battle report, you know how powerful vanguard bets can be. By contrast, the stern guard are armed with bolt guns and special issue ammunition. There are four types of special issue ammunition. You must use each... One. Well, you must use the same one as the rest of your unit, but you don't have to keep using the same one each time. So, if you choose Dragonfire, your shots gain Ignore's cover. If you choose Hellfire, your shots become Poison Dew Plus. If you choose Kraken, you gain AP4 and it's plus 6 inch range. If you choose Vengeance Round to choose Gets Hot, you lose 6 inch range, but you become AP3. So these are very powerful and make the Stone Guard a lot more adaptable to various situations. If you're fighting monstrous creatures, for example, you might choose Hellfire Rounds to get more wounds in. If you are fighting against War Bikers, you may choose Ignore's Cover. If you are trying to fight at long range, Rapid Fire with extra range. And if you're fighting Chaos Marines, then obviously AP3. They are 22 points each of the same cost as a Vanguard with a Jump Pack. Uh, any model can choose to have a Storm Bolter instead, or a Combi Weapon. Combi Weapons usually are a better choice because you keep the Bolter ammo as well as getting some Special Weapons. Two Veterans may choose Special Weapons though, so you can still have weapons. Um, Stern Guard are one of two squads who have access to the Heavy Flamer as a Special Weapon, or a Heavy Weapon, which they are also allowed access to. The Sergeant may take a Chainsword, Grav Pistol, Lightning Claw, Plasma Pistol, Power Weapon or Power Fist. So he can be made quite powerful for melee or to add some extra shooting if you need something other than a bolt gun. Uh, the Virtual Sergeant may take Melter Bombs and the unit may choose the various transports. In my experience, Vanguard are very powerful but they need to get to melee. I really like Stone Guard. I think the, the um, what's it called, Specialist Ammo is really cool. Then we have Dreadnoughts and in the same stat line, Venerables. Dreadnoughts are 446, 12, 12, 10 armor, 4, 2, and 3 HP. Venerable are the same, but they have plus 1 weapon skill and ballistic skill. A basic Dreadnought is 100 points, and it is 25 points to upgrade to Venerable. Both come with Power Fist and Storm Bolter, Multi Melter, Searchlight, and Smoke Launchers, and they may choose to swap their weapons. Multi Melter may be swapped for a Twin Linked Auto Cannon, Twin Linked Heavy Bolter, Twin Linked Heavy Flamer, or a Plasma Cannon, Assault Cannon, or a Twin Linked Last Cannon. Depends on the purpose you want it to fulfill. You may choose to swap the Storm Bolter for Heavy Flamer. Extra armor, which I'm hoping is on here. Uh, no, it's not. Sorry. Uh, but I think it, what it does is reduce stun to shaken. Power Fist and Storm Bolts may be exchanged for Twin Link Auto Cannon or a Missile Launcher if you are knowing your Dreadnought is not going to get into melee. Bear in mind that these guys now have Power Fist instead of Dreadnought Close Combat Weapons, so will count as Initiative 1, I believe. Uh, may upgrade to Venerable, as I said, and may select a Drop Pod. A Drop Pod is a brilliant Dreadnought delivery system, in my opinion. It's the best way of getting a Dreadnought up and close if you wanted to do that. Obviously, if you wanted to stay at range, then don't bother. The Ironclad, this one is even better in a Drop Pod. 446, 13, 13, 10, initiative 4, 2 attacks, 3 hull points. Power Fist with Storm Bolter and a Seismic Hammer with a Melter Gun. Seismic Hammer. Right, where are you? Oh, wait, hang on. And there's also... A Weapons stat line page as well. Seismic Hammer. 
times two strength, AP one, concussive, unwieldy specialist weapon. So you won't gain bonus attacks to two weapons. Uh, anything you hit will become initiative one if it isn't already dead. You'll be strength ten, but you'll be striking at initiative one. So pretty powerful, and it comes with a melter gun as standard. You also have extra armor as standard, searchlight and smoke launchers, and move through cover because you just smash through terrain. Mage, slop, storm bolter, or melter gun for heavy flamers for 10 points on the storm bolter and 3 on the melter gun. May replace power fist with a hurricane bolter, which is 3 twin link bolt guns. May replace seismic hammer with a chain fist, which is basically a power fist with armor bay. May take hunter killer missiles, which are single shot crack missiles, and quite assault launchers, which. I need to get faster at this. Ironclad Assault Launchers. Does not suffer the initiative penalty for charging through difficult terrain. Enemies charging this model do not gain its bonus attacks unless it was already in melee. So that's pretty powerful at keeping units from charging it at bay. Um, and of course may take a drop pod, which I recommend because it's designed to get into melee so it's even better. Legion of the Dam. These guys are a little bit different. Um, they have a veteran profile, so 4444142, but leadership 10. Uh, the sergeant is allowed plus one weapon skill. They are 25 points a model, so very expensive, but they are pretty good. Basically, bolt gun, power armor, grenades. Aid unlooked for. They do not get chapter tactics, Legion of the Damned, but they and they have to come on the board by deep strike, starting in reserve. However, they can re-roll the scatter dice. They cause fear and are fearless. Their weapons ignore cover. They have slow and purposeful, and their armor save is invulnerable. Yes, they have three plus invulnerable saves. So incredibly difficult to put down. They may take flame, a melter gun, or plasma gun. May like take a heavy weapon. These are the only other unit, along with the stern guard, who are allowed a heavy flamer. Sergeant may take a ranged weapon or chainsword power weapon, power fist. In terms of the background, Legion of the Damned are really cool, but you don't really see them that much on the board, despite the fact that their invulnerable save is a three plus, which is basically a storm shield. Then the Terminators, 444414292 plus, so a veteran profile with a 2 plus save. They have Terminator arm, which gives them deep strike, but they cannot sweep in advance. Um, and a 2 plus save and a 5 plus invulnerable. Storm Bolter, Power Fist, Basic. Uh, the Sergeant has a Power Sword instead. Uh, they have Combat Squads, Chapter Tactics, they shall know no fear. May include 5 more Terminators, they are 40 points each, so very expensive. May. Any Terminator may take a Chain Fist instead of a Power Fist, so if you need to crack tanks. For every five models, you are allowed one Heavy Flame or one Assault Cannon or a Cyclone Missile Launcher. Heavy Flamer, 5-4 Template, Assault Cannon, 6-4 Rending, 36-inch range. Cyclone Missile Launcher is a two-shot Missile Launcher. You can fire your Storm Walter as well as the Cyclone. And you may select a Land Raider of any type as a dedicated transport, because they are too big to fit into regular transport, so they have to take Land Raiders. Counting as two transport capacity. Oh no, they don't. Actually, stand corrected. Uh, Terminator Assault Squad. Same profile, but they exchange the gun and power fist for two lightning claws, which are Shred and AP3. Um, 40 points as before, and you for five points, you can swap the lightning claws for Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield, increasing survivability. And again, you're allowed a Land Raider. Then we have the Centurion Assault Squad. Weapon skill, ballistic skill, 4. Strength and toughness, 5. 2 wounds. Initiative, 4. 1 attack, leadership, 8. And a 2 plus save. Sergeant has plus 1 attack and plus 1 leadership. They are armed, basically, with a Twin Link Flamer, the Ironclad Assault Launchers I mentioned earlier, and the Siege Drills. Siege Drills. Ah. Where are you? Siege Drill. Strength, 9, AP, 2, Armor Bane. So, no initiative drop, and very good at wrecking vehicles and things. That's what they're designed to do. Decimator Protocols allow them to shoot at 2 units. Um, move through cover, slow and purposeful, and very bulky, so they count as five for transport capacity, I believe, or is it three? I can't remember. Uh, may include three more centurions, they are 60 points, very expensive. May replace ironclad assault launchers with hurricane bolter, this is up to you. Uh, may replace twin link flame with twin link melter gun, may take an omniscope, omniscope, what does that do? Um, right, where is it? Oh, it's not here, that's annoying. Well, I'm sure anyone who has this book can find it, but I believe it's split fire. It allows the sergeant to fire at a third unit. Uh, and they are allowed to take land raiders as well because of their sheer size. Centurions have one problem compared to Terminators. Yes, they're stronger. Yes, they're tougher. Yes, they have two wounds, but they don't have that invulnerable save. So they can be very easily killed, unfortunately, in comparison to, say, a Terminator or art maybe not Artificer Armour. Um... 
and they are very slow because slow and purposeful obviously slows them down meaning that to get them to where they need to be they need to take a land radar and that's even more expensive in terms of the elite section um, you don't see Vanguard a lot despite their pretty high power just the delivery problem and get and melee being weak uh, Stern Guard you don't see enough of them I think they're really awesome with the special issue ammo but it's up to you which one you choose to take and if it was me I'd try and run both but preferably Stern Guard Dreadnought's pretty common sometimes venerable because of their power and a drop pod it can be a real good threat same with the Ironclad but you see it a bit less because it's 135 points and it's very melee based the Legion of the Damned I wish you'd see them more because they're really cool, but the problem is they're very expensive in terms of points. Even, but if you can get them into position, their three plus invulnerable save should help them out. Uh, Terminators, again, very powerful, but very expensive, and because they're mainly melee based, they don't get run all that often, especially so the Terminator Assault Squad, because you have to get them where they need to be, and that's problematic. In Centurions, as I said, no invulnerable save, very slow, very expensive. So, maybe, but I'm not that keen. Um, that's all for this video. Uh, my next one in this series will look at the fast attack section. I'll probably do another Tactica this week. Uh, thank you for watching. My name is Michael, and I will see you again.